Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. And now for my last guest on this show tonight, we're going to be talking with The Bus Project, an organization that's been around for quite a while, has done some amazing things, and we now have a brand new executive director who is going to be telling us all about the things that are going on at The Bus Project, Tara Solzen. So nice to have you here. Thanks so much for having me and inviting me. So how long have you been at The Bus Project now? Well, I've been... As far as executive director, <laughs> I'll ask it that way. I've been the new executive director for about three weeks now, oh, wow. but I've been on the bus for about six and a half years. Wow. So when you say on the bus, tell us what that means. Well, for me, that means I actually, I came to Oregon to be a Politicor fellow with the Oregon Bus Project in 2007. Right and that's a, prog a program of the bus proje yes, project. Yes, so we have a program that helps train um, college students and recent college graduates in organizing and um, voter engagement. And so I heard about the bus project and about Politicor and came here and I've been volunteering and involved ever since. Wow. How long has the bus project been in existence? We were started in 2002. You can see over here on our bus window. Oh yes, your bus window, <laughs> yes. Yes, and we do have a bus, actually two of them. And so I'm the third executive director and have like I said, I've been paying attention to the bus for a while. <laughs> That's great. Now, the, the people that are involved in the Politicor uh, program, are these all kids who are um, political science majors or people that want to get a, a, have a career in politics for the most part? Or are they just people from all sort of different backgrounds and interests? Um, definitely across the spectrum of interests. We bring on 20 to 24 fellows each summer. We've been doing the program for about eight years now. Oh, wow. And we specifically look to recruit students who might not want to be politicians or go into mm -hmm. politics, but are interested in um, making a change in their communities, organizing, specifically very interested in social justice issues. And we work to train them as leaders in their communities. Yeah. And then also, in addition to that intensive boot camp type training program, we also have a program called Year of Service that follows up on that program for about half of the fellows each year. Oh, wow. We help place them in organizations and public sector type careers. So we give them that extra support they need. And I was actually one of the first Year of Service fellows really? when we started that program. So I care very deeply about I, helping them connect to the community. So really, this is um, it's a great way to build uh, leadership skills, mm -hmm. I imagine. and and to get uh, a career. I mean, really, the, the skills you would learn in that would be amazing in just about any job, I would imagine. Absolutely. The BUS alumni le network is very large at this point. A lot of people have come through the organization, whether or not they've actually worked there or been through Politicor, one of our official training programs. We really were built by volunteers who got together and recognized that there was, there was no group that was specifically advocating for young people in the 18 to 35 sense. Mm -hmm. There's the AARP, there's right. groups that advocate Why for children. <laughs> there, I'm just going no, through the I interest know, groups. But so they came yeah. together to focus on what can we do as volunteers to promote volunteerism to get more people involved civically. And we have a bunch of leadership programs that help support that pipeline, but it's a growing network. So you see this button. All over I'm the place, the I'd imagine. You, um, you mentioned the alumni. There has been a, a pretty notable um, group of people that have come out of it. I mean, people mm -hmm. have gone on to do some pretty amazing things um, yeah, in their communities, haven't they? I was looking exciting. on your website. I was like, wow, there's some, there's some names there that I recognize, people mm -hmm. that have been involved in the bus project. And there really, there really are buses. That's what I remember yes. <laughs> years ago when I first heard about the bus project. And, how fun is that? They get out on buses and they actually go out. Mm -hmm. and, and so you've done that, I assume, probably numerous times. Yeah, I can't even count the number of actual bus, official bus trips I've been on on our bus. We like to say we drive votes, we drive leaders, we drive change, and yes, we have a bus. That's so and fun. And so we load it up with volunteers and go knock on doors for issues where we know we can make a meaningful impact with our volunteer time. Or we load them up and bring them down to Salem to talk with legislators mm. and get more of a grassroots presence right. in the building to make sure that it's not just a bunch of paid lobbyists and that we're bringing young people to talk about issues that care about them to their legislators. Is this a nonpartisan group? Yes, we're a nonpartisan organization. Okay. So um, you, you talked about the Politicor, which is sort of an extensive uh, program. What is it? A, boot camp. A, a boot camp. Boot camp. <laughs> but you. But people, if they want to be involved, they don't have to go in 
that deep, right? They right. can just become a, a volunteer and mm -hmm. hop on the bus. <laughs> yeah, How so does we that have work? a few different other programs going on. So in the three categories I just mentioned, so we drive votes. Mm -hmm. We do work to make sure that all Oregonians who are eligible to vote can get a ballot. And so we do that through registering voters. We have huge uh -huh. volunteer voter registration days, but we work to get young people specifically registered to vote who aren't as used to that process. And so we'll right. go out to breweries or concerts. And yeah, places where you're going to find yeah, young people. Yeah, where you find young people. And we register voters, and it's a very volunteer-driven event. So when people want to get involved, they might come and help us register voters. Or when an election's coming up, we're calling through those same voters and others, reminding them to vote. And do you have a plan? Do you know where to turn your ballot in? That's great because a lot of people don't. I mean, there's exactly. been enough changes in the voting system in the last mm -hmm. few years that, especially probably older people, but but all sorts of people are confused as to what they need mm -hmm. to do. But it's so much easier to register to vote now. It is, and we it's not as easy as it could be. In mm -hmm. some states, there are more barriers than there are in Oregon. Um, but here, we are committed to working on the policy change to make sure that those who are eligible are registered and able to vote. And so in addition to reminding people to vote, we're making sure we're down there in Salem and um, and talking with county clerks, county administrators, saying there should really be more ballot drop sites in uh -huh. one yeah. place or another. Yeah, so I'll go, I'll go along without the ballot drop yeah. sites. Yeah. So we're always looking for volunteers who are interested in these issues and care about access to democracy because it's um, we can't do it alone. And so that's one of our issues. One other thing we do is you'll see on my T-shirt, it's actually so the week um, the week before the election, conveniently mm -hmm. enough, Halloween falls mm -hmm. during that week and so that's the one night of the year that people expect a knock on their door. That's so true. We that's have true. every year, this started in Oregon and now it's actually a national effort um, in cities across the country. We have trick or vote where you're I never too old. I that started here. Yeah, oh. so you're never too yeah. old to trick or treat, <laughs> trick or vote. And we knock on doors and just remind people to vote, to turn in their ballots and so we knock on thousands of doors every Halloween, um, just saying, do you have your ballot? Do you remember where to turn in? Here's a nonpartisan voter guide if you're yeah. hoping to vote down the ballot. Because there's so many issues, especially young people just don't know, oh, Soil Water Conservation District, I don't know about that. It's, but, it's overwhelming and it's yeah. very confusing sometimes. Right, but that's the pipeline to getting more leaders elected. So you start in one place and the same with local issues. So we work to make sure they understand yeah, what's, what's on what's the ballot. On. So how, how young do you start working with, with kids or young adults? Well, we do. We have a program in high schools called yeah. Democracy Cup because one issue that the bus had worked on down in Salem was helping to pass pre-registration. So you can and register so to vote. Mean? What when, does that mean? So you register to vote when you eight, you're 18. You can start voting then. But mm -hmm. um, many people who are younger than 18 can pre-register to make sure that they have access to a ballot and they're ready to vote beforehand. And so so that everything's lined up so when they turn 18, boom, they're mm -hmm. good to go. Exactly, because yeah. we already have the information yeah. about them, they're ready. And so part of the work that we do is working in high schools, teaching civics education programs, because like I said, we don't just register students to vote, we want them to be more engaged in their communities, volunteer, pay attention to what's happening in government, right. put a more positive spin on it. There's so much conflict that we try and take the positive route. And so we train volunteers and mentors to um, to give these presentations in high schools and empower students to run their mm. own voter registration drives. That's great, and students are gonna listen to each other. Yeah, hopefully. exactly. Yeah. We know yeah. the most effective way to get someone to vote is to ask them to, and mm -hmm. they're more likely to vote and learn about the issues if a peer is asking them. Well, and if, each other, if they're interested in them, they have these conversations, yeah. it's great. Exactly. You, uh, I think you brought a picture, I don't know if they've shown it yet, but there was a picture of the bus with mm -hmm. all these people in front of it, and it, it just looks like so much fun. So, do you, I mean, is it, it's not just all work, it's, it's fun too? No, it's very fun, and that was oh, there's, the there's whole, the group there. yeah, I mean, that's us in Salem last year, us meaning not me, but the, the rest of the project, bus, we yeah. call ourselves a family. Um, so we'll bring it down and load it up with volunteers and other folks to go down and talk with legislators. But yeah, it's, we try to always have games on the bus and make, use it as an opportunity to, for people to meet one another. And I really see us as kind of a creative hub for young people. Mm -hmm. That this is where the, the bus project is where you come kind of in between campaigns. Like maybe there's a big issue campaign that you're really excited about, but this will continue to be 
um, interesting and innovative, innovative for young people to come and say, all right, I want to make a change in my community. Yeah. So oh, great. I think that's great to, to start, them, start them young. Yeah. So what, what's, what, do you have like big plans to make any huge changes or you like the way it's going and you just want to keep it going now? As you... um, well, in terms of where we're going, my first few weeks getting started. So 2014 will be a big election year yeah. in Oregon. There's a lot of potential issues on the ballot and a lot of um, controversial stuff. Exactly. And, and the candidates too are going to be. It's going to be mm -hmm. and so a heated, heated year. There's a lot to keep track of, and we know right now we will be registering voters. As you just saw, we registered more than 14,000 in 2012, and wow. so we continue. 14,000 voters? Mm -hmm. it, oh, that's that's so, pretty impressive. Yeah. So we do that very much through volunteers, through the Politicor fellows. Politicor actually, they get to build their own field plan and oh. decide specifically what they're working on and how they're going to accomplish those goals, how many doors are they going to knock on, how many voters are they going to talk to. So they register on a, a, some core amount of that, but um, we will, in 2014, we'll definitely be working to make sure that young people are educated and engaged on the many complicated ballot measures that will be out there. I've heard a lot of issues trickling up so far, and we'll see which actually qualify, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. um, I know that it's something I'm committed to ensuring that Oregon continues to be a leader in getting young people to turn out at the ballot and to vote down the ballot as well. That it's, so, it's so depressing when you hear the voter turnout, mm -hmm. you know, the, the figures. It's just like, well, what? What's, you know, I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's, it's not hard to vote, especially when you can vote by mail here. Yeah. I mean, how tough is that? Exactly. There's just a lot of things to keep track of. And so for 2014, I am committed to the model we have now mm -hmm. of driving votes, driving leaders through leadership development programs and driving change, making yeah. sure that in addition to these field efforts and voter mobilization, we're also looking for that slate of issues that really impact young people, what they care about most, and seeing how we can help uh, spur those along through our policy work. Mm -hmm. One other thing we have for mm -hmm. 2014 is a um, a conference that we've done every other year called Rebooting Democracy to make sure that organizers have the skills they need to uh, go um, forth. So good. I'm excited about that too. Good. You know, we're almost out of time, but I do want to mention that I that I heard that you were uh, bestowed some uh, great honor oh. uh, as uh, what was it? One of the thirty. Um, rising stars. Rising actually. stars. Rising yeah. stars. Tell, tell me a little bit about that because before we, we close oh, the great. show. Um, yeah, Portland Monthly actually, they as part of their Light of Fire Awards, they just they selected a group of 30 rising stars in the Portland metro region who um, work to support building change in their communities. And so I got to go to the lighting, the Light of Fire Awards Center last night with many other young Gosh, innovators, and I was just honored to be part of the well, group. Congratulations! Really That's that is a great honor. But that how great to be to know you're making a difference, and actually that somebody recognizes it too. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty nice. Congratulations. Pretty well, well I'm so you. glad to have you here today. And you've got your work cut out for you because, you yeah. know, there's always always people that are pushing back, don't want to become involved in any way, but this mm -hmm. is um, its a great organization. So thanks so much for being here, yeah, Tara. Thank you, and feel free to plug into the bus project. Yeah, on the bus. check out the website, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we, we know how to find you. Great. Thanks thank so you. much for joining us here on Community Hotline. I hope that if you are a young person and you're interested, you know, even if you're not interested, maybe you should check it out. Find out about the bus project. You might be very pleasantly surprised at what you can learn and the friends you can make and the connections you can make in this community. I appreciate you watching this show. We hope that you are spurred on to, to be involved with your community and, and make a difference. I'm Monica Weitzel. Thanks for watching Community Hotline.